Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Current Landscape and Future Directions of Multi-Specific Antibodies. I am Cassie Soltman of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Sinobiological. To learn more, visit www.sinobiological.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also use the Ask a Question box to let us know if you're having any trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker for today's webinar, Dr. Shevna Massey, Associate Product Manager, Sinobiological. For a complete biography on our speaker, please visit the Biography tab at the top of your screen. Dr. Massey, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you for the introduction. Hi everyone, I am Shabna Massey. I am Associate Product Manager at Sinobiological. Today, I'm going to talk about the current landscape and future directions of multi-specific antibodies. To cover this topic, I will give a brief overview of multi-specific antibody therapy, then we'll talk about the FDA-approved bispecific antibodies, followed by a discussion on new advancements in antibody-based therapeutics and uh, what multispecific antibodies are in various stages of clinical trials. And uh, after that, we'll discuss the challenges and future directions of the multispecific antibody therapy. And uh, finally, I will introduce how Sinobiological is supporting the research in antibody therapy development. So let's begin with the overview of multispecific antibody therapy. Antibody therapeutics is a growing market. Therapeutic antibodies have become the predominant class of new drugs developed in recent years. It has been successfully growing since its introduction more than four decades ago. And over the past five years, antibodies have become the best-selling drugs in the pharmaceutical market. The global therapeutic monoclonal antibody market was valued at approximately $115 billion in 2018, and it is projected to reach more than $300 billion by 2025. Thus, the market for therapeutic antibody drugs has experienced explosive growth as new drugs have been approved for treating various human diseases, including many cancers, autoimmune, metabolic, and infectious diseases. With this growing market uh, potential of antibody therapy, the antibody engineering has dramatically evolved as well. At first, whole naked IgG antibodies were used directly as therapeutics. Now, therapeutic antibodies can be roughly separated into two categories. The first category involves the direct use of the naked antibody for disease um, therapy. These antibodies are used for cancer treatment and elicit death by different mechanisms, including ADCC or CDC. The example for that is the drug rituxan, and uh, or the direct targeting of cancer cells to induce apoptosis. Uh, the example for that is Herceptin, or uh, the targeting of the tumor microenvironment, um, or uh, targeting immune checkpoints. Um, and so this is uh, one way, the one category of uh, antibody therapeutics. The second category for antibody therapeutics now includes additional engineering, where this additional engineering is performed to enhance their therapeutic efficacy. Some general approaches for the use of these antibodies includes immunocytokines, antibody drug conjugates, radionuclides, immunolyposomes, bispecific antibodies, and CAR T cells. Um, an example for bispecific antibody is uh, blincido, and uh, for a CAR T cell, um, Kimraya is a popular example. Our focus for this talk will be bispecific and multispecific antibodies. So, multifactorial diseases have searched the need to enhance the potency of monoclonal antibodies to further extend their mechanism of action. Multispecific antibodies are, emerged, uh, are emerging enhanced counterparts of monoclonal antibodies, 
which have the ability to specifically bind with two or more different antigens. And by doing so, they increase their selectivity towards the target cell and also lead to enhanced cytotoxicity. This schematic here shows the different multispecific antibodies binding to the antigen on the tumor cell compared to the classical monoclonal antibody. The bispecific and trispecific antibodies here can bind to the antigen on tumor cells, as well as they can recruit T cells and other immune cells at the tumor site. And that increases its uh, specificity, clinical efficacy, and potency. There are, have been important advances in antibody engineering um, over the past uh, decade, uh, and that has enhanced the safety and efficacy of therapeutic antibodies. These developments, along with the, the, along with a greater understanding of uh, antibodies, have uh, paved the way for next generation of new and improved antibody-based drugs. There are various formats of bispecific and multispecific antibodies, as you can see here. There are combinations of light and chain, uh, light and heavy chain variable fragments, as shown here um, in panel one. Um, you can see uh, different bispecific and multispecific antibodies. They are in the IgG-like format. Whereas in uh, panel two, you see that uh, there are bispecific antibodies that are fragments and fusion proteins. So overall, there are various formats of IgG-like and fragment multispecific antibodies. You know, what are the advantages of multispecific antibodies over traditional monoclonal antibodies? So multispecific antibodies have many advantages. Um, they offer enhanced specificity. Uh, towards the uh, target, and uh, they have, uh, as well as there are, they have better therapeutic effects. Their ability to engage with the immune cells has uh, enhanced cytotoxic effects, and uh, they can redirect specific polyclonal immune cells, such as T cells and NK cells, to tumor cells uh, to enhance tumor killing, and simultaneously. They, have, they are better at preventing off-site toxicity given their uh, specificity uh, towards the target antigens. And uh, from the perspective of uh, healthcare costs, multispecific antibodies are appealing since a similar or superior therapeutic effect could be achieved with a single therapeutic agent in case of multispecific antibodies as compared with uh, uh, using a combination of monoclonal antibodies. So this effectively reduces cost in terms of development and production when compared to multiple uh, single-based antibodies used in combination therapy, or even compared to the production of CAR T cells, which currently require a several weeks long uh, process uh, for each individual patient. So multispecific antibodies are, uh, they have enhanced tumor killing, they have enhanced specificity. Also, uh, their dual targeting uh, for immune checkpoints, um, it is unique and it has overlapping functions and effectively prevents drug resistance. And um, compared to other uh, treatments, antibody-based treatments, multispecific antibodies are also cost-effective. Now, majority of the antibody therapy efforts have been targeted towards cancer therapies. So let's take a quick look at the landscape of multispecific antibodies in uh, cancers. And uh, first, we'll begin with the hematological cancers, hematological malignancies. So in our previous uh, schematic, we saw that multispecific antibodies recruit immune cells in addition to binding uh, the tumor antigens. So, um, they are being developed as uh, these multispecific antibodies in hematological malignancy. Uh, they are, have, are being developed as immune cell engaging antibodies and they utilize CD3. So that is the major um, binding, antigen binding uh, that uh, the multispecific antibodies in hematological malignancies have, um, that is uh, CD3. And as you can see here, 
that uh, uh, this figure shows that 129 out of the 138 bispecific antibodies from the past few years have been directed to targeting CD3. This target engage, this direct engagement of uh, T cells helps to reduce the time and gap between an immune cell and cancer cells. A few others from the past few years have uh, also bridged the gap between uh, NK cells to the tumor cells and uh, by targeting the um, CD30 and uh, CD16A. The other most promising targets for multispecific antibodies are uh, CD19, CD20, and BCMA in uh, hematological malignancies. So there are different combinations of these multispecific antibodies um, that have been tested and shown to have uh, um, efficacious effect in clinical testing, in preclinical and clinical testing. All right, so on the other hand, in uh, solid tumors, um, what does the landscape look like for multispecific antibodies? Um, so overall, solid tumors account for 90% of the newly diagnosed cancer cases. And currently, um, there are very few drugs available to produce a durable therapeutic benefit in uh, patients. And uh, that is because of the um, high heterogeneity of cancer cells. Uh, in the past few years, there have been more than 170 clinical trials of bispecific antibodies to treat solid tumors. And in these 170 clinical trials, the popular targets in uh, solid tumors have been, uh, we can see here, uh, CDLA4, PD-1, PDL one HER2, um, EGFR. Um, these are some of the popular targets in uh, solid tumors. So overall, this also shows that there are different combinations for bispecific antibodies that have been used uh, in terms of um, targeting the, um, the antigen targeting combinations that have been uh, focused on in clinical trials uh, for solid tumors. Now, following this overview of multispecific antibodies, in uh, hematological and hematological malignancies in solid tumors, let's look into um, what multispecific antibodies have been approved by the FDA. So here we can see that uh, currently there are nine bispecific antibodies that have been approved by the FDA. Uh, we can note some popular target molecules like uh, CD3, CD19, EGFR, um, MET, uh, Wedge F, BCME. Uh, these are some popular targets that we can see in this list of uh, these uh, FD approved by specific antibodies. And uh, we can note that there are, uh, in terms of the indications, majority of them are uh, for uh, hematological malignancies. And uh, there are also two uh, of these drugs um, that the multispecific antibodies are for non-cancer indications. One is for um, hemophilia A and the other one for uh, uh, macular degeneration. And all of these have been uh, approved between the years uh, 2014 and 2023. And uh, I think it's worth noting that just this year in 2023, there have been two bispecific antibodies that have uh, uh, achieved approval by the FDA. Now that we have seen what has been approved by the FDA, let's take a look at what multispecific antibodies are in different stages of drug discovery and clinical trials. So in this table, you can see that there are, um, so it's, it's showing nine out of the 15 bispecific antibodies that are in uh, the late clinical stage uh, of clinical trials. Some uh, target antigens that we can note here are the popular HER2, PDL1, CDLA4, uh, WEGF, EGFR, um, uh, BCMA, CD3, but also some new targets such as DLL4 uh, and FCM receptor. Um, to be are also you know, worth noting here. And another thing that is worth noting here is 
that uh, there are several bispecific antibodies um, in these uh, late clinical trial stages that are uh, targeting for solid tumors. Um, so that is a very uh, promising um, uh, advancement in uh, multispecific antibodies to see that there are more uh, of these bispecific antibodies that are in the pipeline for um, uh, targeting uh, solid tumors. So overall, we um, know that there are um, over 50 bispecific antibodies that are under investigations and clinical trials and more than 180 bispecific antibodies that are in preclinical development. Now, specifically looking at the developments of trispecific antibodies, there are seven uh, trispecific antibodies that are in early clinical trials. And of these seven, almost half are for hematological malignancies and half for solid tumors. And uh, these trispecific antibodies, they simultaneously target two uh, tumor-associated antigens. And uh, um, in addition, they co-engage uh, T cells by um, binding at uh, the CD3 and uh, along with you know, agonists of uh, co-stimulatory molecules or antagonists of co-inhibitory immune checkpoint receptors um, in a single molecule. So this may revert um, T cell exhaustion that is very commonly seen in uh, antibody therapies. And uh, similarly, targeting of two activating receptors in uh, NK cells may improve their cytotoxic potency. So different combinations of these um, targeting antigens um, can help further um, tune the efficacy and um, uh, potency of these uh, multispecific antibodies. So even though there are no trispecific antibodies that have been approved by the regulatory bodies, uh, we see that there are several of uh, these um, antibodies that have entered the initial stages of clinical development. Now looking at the exciting advancements in uh, uh, bispecific and trispecific antibodies, it is even more exciting to see that there are also tetraspecific antibodies in preclinical developments. And as the name indicates, that uh, these uh, antibodies can bind four um, antigens um, simultaneously. And uh, there are three tetraspecific antibodies in uh, preclinical research where and where they have the ability to provide superior potency by binding uh, four different receptors simultaneously. They also have uh, more challenges to overcome as well. And uh, a few of these challenges include uh, overcoming the manufacturing instability. Um, and uh, so these Three antibody, uh, three tetraspecific uh, antibodies that are in uh, preclinical studies. The applications for those, so they are uh, majorly for cancers, uh, leukemia, glioblastoma, lymphoma, and uh, solid tumors. So it is very exciting to see that the multispecific antibodies are making uh, such uh, exciting advancements, and uh, tetraspecific antibodies are um, also in uh, preclinical development. Uh, we have briefly touched on how tetraspecific antibodies are facing challenges. Now, uh, let's see how, what kind of challenges are multispecific antibodies overall uh, facing and also the future directions for the multispecific antibody therapy. So despite the clinical success of bispecific antibodies, many obstacles remain such as uh, dosing, treatment resistance, uh, and modest efficacy, especially in terms of solid tumors. Uh, which is mostly because of extracellular scarcity. So all of these challenges still need to be overcome. And uh, um, even though uh, relative um, cost, they're relatively you know cost effective, we have previously seen and talked about uh, that and the advantages of familiar specific antibodies, um, it is still a very long and costly manufacturing process that needs to be uh, further um, optimized and uh, the aggressive stimulation in multispecific antibody therapy can, uh, it has the risk of eliciting the cytokine release syndrome. So that is something that still needs to be uh, further addressed for multispecific antibody therapy. And as for many 
uh, therapeutics, it is always challenging to determine the best route and optimum dose for administration, as well as um, addressing the systemic side effects and uh, the even control release um, of formulations. So all of these uh, things are the, are some main uh, challenges that need to be overcome uh, for the advancement of multi-specific antibody therapy. Some examples of challenges seen in multi-specific antibody therapy for solid tumors is that uh, as seen in other immunotherapies, there is um, increased on-target off tumor toxicities. There is sparse T cell infiltration uh, and impaired T cell quality due to the presence of an immunosuppressive tumor and microenvironment, which affect the safety and limit efficacy of uh, CD3 multispecific antibodies. So some ways to overcome these hurdles is by targeting the tumor exclusive antigens, such as uh, human leukocyte antigen, HLA, presented uh, new antigens, or surface antigens from uh, uh, virally induced um, cancers. The number of um, um, the in increase of intratumoral T cells um, and the improvement in the quality of um, can improve the quality of uh, T cell responses. And one way to achieve that is by blocking the immunosuppressive cytokines and targeting uh, co stimulation of uh, T cell effector function in survival. Um, so these are the few uh, ways that are being utilized to overcome. Uh, this, you know, different hurdles in uh, uh, seen in multispecific antibody therapy. How, what does the future of multispecific antibody uh, look like? The commercial clinical pipeline of antibody therapeutics has shown substantial growth over the past years, as we have seen uh, by, you know, seeing different um, by specific antibodies that have already gained the FDA approval and then multiple that are in different stages of clinical development. So despite all the challenges, the future of multispecific antibodies is very promising. Uh, some future directions uh, under focus are <clears throat> enhancement of uh, safety and tolerability, uh, potential of the combinatorial approaches uh, that can help to overcome the challenges and it can generate uh, more effective responses. Um, also establishing uh, various antibody platforms uh, including FC engineering, uh, different combinations of heavy and light chain uh, uh, pairings, and the high tru throughput production methods that can help um, uh, increase, improve the cost effectiveness of uh, uh, in multi-specific antibody therapies. And also extended it. So we have seen that the majority of them have been uh, focused on uh, cancers, hematological and uh, solid tumors, so uh, the future, um, in the future, it is uh, being focused on uh, taking it beyond oncology and extended it to different uh, disorders and diseases, um, neurological, infectious, ophthalmological. We saw that uh, one indication um, included ophthalmology, but it uh, is focused to extend it to um, beyond oncology more and also cover various diseases and um, et cetera. All right, so now I would like to take the opportunity to highlight how Sinobiological, as a leading reagents company, is supporting the multispecific antibody therapy research. I would like to begin with the sharing that uh, Sinobiological is a one-stop supplier of proteins, recombinant proteins, antibodies, gene products, and ELISA kits and more. We specialize in recombinant proteins and antibodies. Within the recombinant proteins, we offer um, drug target proteins, GMP grade cytokines, CAR T cell therapy targets, immune checkpoints, and F3 receptors. These are a few um, uh, major product lines that I would like to highlight. And then for our antibodies, we, we offer primary and secondary antibodies, tagged, untagged versions of um, antibodies, um, also loading controls and neutralizing antibodies. We are also uh, we are uh, proud to offer the world's largest uh, viral antigen bank. We offer 2,000 unique antigen and antibody products. In addition to our, in addition to our catalog uh, collection, Sinobiological also offers 
customized CRO services for protein and antibody production and antibody development, including uh, nanobody production, antibody humanization, AI-powered antibody of anti maturation, um, and others. So specifically for multi-specific antibodies, Sinobiological is equipped with the uh, highly efficient and um, um, excellent platforms for antibody development. Humanization of uh, humanization, um, antibody humanization and affinity maturation platforms. And we have a very experienced team and uh, offer a well-established antibody drug evaluation system. So Sinobiological provides a wide range of reagents and services for the entire process of multi-specific antibody uh, development. And uh, I will go into more details of this in my next few slides. So as I said, we offer a wide range of products and services for customers um, with the complete multi-specific antibody development solutions. And it covers the various phases of the development process, beginning from antibody development to antibody optimization, drug ability assessment, animal model evaluation, and uh, process development in clinical studies. Here, I would like to um, highlight the um, some target proteins uh, which are, you know, target proteins, as we have seen, are key reagents for uh, antibody drug development. So some examples of recombinant target proteins that Sino offers um, are PD-1, PD-L1, CD3, uh, CDLA4, uh, WEDGE-F, uh, EGFR, to highlight a few. And uh, we offer uh, tar different target proteins, um, you know, this is a non-exhaustive list, just a few examples. We cover target proteins, uh, immune checkpoints, um, cytokines, and receptors for drug development. And uh, uh, here are a few examples through which I would like to highlight that uh, our recombinant proteins are high purity, and they are validated for their bioactivity, as shown here for uh, um, two examples of CD3 and PD1 recombinant proteins that are um, sec HPLC, uh, their purity is determined by sec HPLC, and they are validated for their bioactivity in uh, binding assays. In addition to high purity and bioactivity validation, these recombinant proteins are also low in endotoxin and have high stability, and they are available um, in various forms, um, tag-free and uh, multi uh, available in uh, um, options of multiple tags and um, from multiple species. And these uh, products show, these recombinant proteins show high batch to batch consistency. And uh, lastly, I would like to highlight that our products are very uh, trusted by our users and um, uh, it is indicated by the high citation number for our products in top tier journals. Sinobiological offers this recently optimized product line of FC receptors, as we uh, saw that uh, FC receptors are uh, uh, being targeted uh, by multi-specific antibodies, and they play a significant role in uh, uh, the various steps of uh, uh, antibody um, therapy research with applications at the antibody uh, screening step, candidate development, um, ADE, um, uh, antibody dependent enhancement effect. And uh, they are uh, applicable in uh, various indications, uh, major, major of, uh, the main one being cancer immunotherapy. And they're also uh, applicable in vaccine development and immunizations. So as highlighted for our recombinant proteins, this product line for F3 receptors is also um, high in purity and uh, validated for its activity in various tests and highly cited. Another important product line that is uh, very applicable in uh, multi-specific antibody therapy research is uh, cytokines and growth factors. Sinobiological offers premium quality cytokines and growth factors, and these are widely used in cell proliferation 
inhibition detection, cytokine release detection, uh, mixed uh, lymphocyte reaction in other experiments in multispecific antibody therapy development. And Cytobiological has developed a series of cytokines with um, high activity, high purity, and high batch-to-batch -batch consistency, as indicated here by through the example of uh, IL-18 here. And uh, this table shows uh, some selected cytokines, um, cytokine catalog products that are well cited. And um, uh, I would also like to highlight that uh, cyanobiological products are high priority, that these high quality products are very competitively uh, priced. And uh, just one example here that we show high batch to batch consistency um, and our product is uh, very competitively priced compared to um, uh, other competitors. We also um, have developed a series of high quality ELISA kits and uh, ELISA peer sets that we offer. Um, they are raised against full net proteins, uh, these antibodies, um, and uh, it contains the capture and detection antibodies, um, both are monoclonal. And they, these kits and antibody uh, ELASA pair sets go through stringent quality control measures. And again, they are um, very affordably priced. In addition to our large catalog collection, we offer various custom services for antibody development. We have uh, four antibody development platforms, phage display, beacon, single B-cell screening platform, fax, single B-cell sorting platform and hyperdoma development platform. We also offer protein expression services. Um, these are high throughput and large scale, scale protein production uh, services. And we offer four major, major expression systems and uh, use the high efficiency expression vectors. In addition to that, we also have control antibody production service um, where we use uh, research grade anti uh, antibody drugs and uh, um, there are, uh, um, they can be used as positive controls. And uh, we have a track record of uh, successful production of more than 10,000 antibodies. Then our, uh, initially, you know, we also offer the cell line, stable cell line development service. Uh, we offer the officially licensed CHO K1 cell lines to support IND, NDA, and BLA applications. Um, and uh, this is this has a fast delivery within two to four months. And uh, there are a variety of packages that are available. So overall, uh, Sinobiological has an extensive catalog where we offer more than uh, 6,500 proteins, 14,000 antibodies, um, several, 40, more than 47,000 gene products and more than 600 ELISA kits. And uh, from recombinant proteins to monoclonal antibodies, our high quality products undergo rigorous testing and validation to ensure reliability and consistency. And with our extensive portfolio, we aim to provide researchers with the necessary tools to advance side effect discovery and drive innovation in the field. Also, our CRO services are designed to support your research and development needs across various fields. We offer a range of services, uh, including uh, recombinant protein expression, as I've shared, recombinant antibody production, uh, antibody development, and uh, with our expertise and uh, state-of-the-art facilities that we offer, we provide reliable and efficient solutions to accelerate your research projects. And with that, I would like to thank you all for your attention, and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Massey, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just type your question into the Ask a Question box and click Submit. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Let's go ahead and get started. Our first question is, what is the current status of multi-specific antibodies in terms of drug discovery and approval? Um, thank you for the question. 
Um, so there has been a remarkable increase in the number of antibody therapeutics in the past few years, as we have uh, seen um, throughout this presentation. And uh, uh, currently, there are 11 bispecific antibodies in the late stages of a clinical trial, so phase two and three, um, as of uh, July 2023. And uh, the most recent approvals uh, that have been are for a T-cell engaging tri-specific antibody that targets the BCMA, CD38, and uh, CD3. And uh, it has been granted uh, an orphan drug designation by the FDA, and it is for the treatment of uh, multiple myeloma. So that, um, with that, you know, we, we have seen throughout the presentation how uh, through the FDA and uh, the late stages of uh, uh, clinical trials, and even in the early preclinical stages. So throughout this process, um, uh, the multi-specific antibodies are very rapidly uh, moving through this. And uh, just you know, within this year, um, two bispecific antibodies have uh, uh, achieved uh, FDA approval. Fantastic, thank you. Our next question that we have here is, what is the status of multi-specific antibodies and monoclonal antibodies in terms of commercial pipeline growth? Um, for the commercial pipeline growth uh, of antibody therapeutics overall, uh, it has shown a substantial growth over the past year. So uh, comparing the uh, antibody therapeutics development uh, in the um, um, 2022, and uh, compared to that in 2023, there has been a 20% um, increase in uh, um, the commercial pipeline, uh, clinical pipeline for antibody therapeutics. And uh, the overall number of uh, the antibody therapeutics has dramatically, dramatically increased as well. Uh, there have been more than 140 antibodies in the commercial pipeline uh, just this year. And if we characterize them based on the indications, then definitely the majority of the antibodies have been for cancer treatment, um, as we noted during the presentation as well. Um, and, um, but for the non-cancer indications, uh, there is one bispecific antibody that is in the late clinical trials, and that is for the cardiovascular indication. And uh, bispecific antibodies overall are very successfully navigating the late stage clinical studies. Um, in the regulatory review, and um, um, as uh, I just mentioned that, you know, um, out of the nine FDA approved by specific antibodies overall, uh, two of those have gained the FDA approval just here. So the antibody therapy is very rapidly growing and moving through the commercial pipeline, I would say. Okay, great. Thank you. Our next question here is, how does the selectivity of multi-specific antibodies towards multiple antigens enhance their cytotoxic activity and potential as cancer therapies? The um, enhancement um, of cytotoxic activities and potential um, um, as cancer therapies for, you know, by um, targeting multiple antigens um, for multi-specific antibodies. So, uh, this, uh, while multi-specific antibodies are a very dynamic and promising field, it still faces some major challenges, um, as we noted. And uh, the most serious difficulty is certainly the availability of uh, the suitable target antigen for the majority of cancers. Um, the common target in uh, various bispecific and multi-specific antibodies is CD3. And the direct that allows for the direct recruitment of T cells to the tumor, and that enhances the cytotoxic effect. And that has been critical in showing efficacious responses in thera antibody therapeutics. Um, CD3 has been uh, a most promising target for multispecific antibodies in both hematological and um, solid tumors. So it is showing, you know, um, really good. Uh, cytotoxic activity um, and uh, potential um, as uh, the uh, in cancer therapies. Wonderful, thank you. Our next question here is, does Sinobiological develop multi-specific antibodies? Sinobiological offers uh, a very rapid and efficient bispecific antibody expression services 
we have a strong expertise and experience in recombinant antibody production. We can initiate the production from antibody sequences and facilitate the expression of a variety of bispecific antibody forms, um, such as the bispecific uh, T cell engagers, the bites, um, diabodies, uh, cross molecular antibodies, and um, DVD IgG. Um, Sinobiological provides antibody expression services ranging from microgram to gram level productions, and uh, we use the efficient expression vectors in optimized proprietary medium, transfection reagents, and uh, high density cell suspension culture technology to meet the diverse application needs of our customers. So we have this entire process through which uh, we facilitate the uh, development of uh, bispecific and multispecific antibodies. Okay, excellent, thank you. And it looks like we have time for just one more question today. What services does Sinobiological offer for multi-specific antibodies clinical studies? So all the, um, I mentioned these services during my presentation, um, Sinobiological provides services along the entire process of multi-specific antibody development and characterization. And to support the process of uh, development and clinical research of multi-specific antibodies, uh, we provide a comprehensive range of products and services. And this includes the cell line development service, the PK antibody development service, ADA antibody development service, and uh, CHO, uh, the CHO cell culture media. Uh, starting from the customer's cDNA or antibody sequence, we can uh, provide cell line development service that ranges from expression vector construction to screening for high yield and stable cell lines. And we offer the officially licensed CHO K1 cell lines to support the IND, uh, NDA, and BLA applications. And um, to further expand on that, we offer a range of anti idiotype antibody generation service packages for the quantitative testing of drug levels in animal uh, or human serum. And uh, this facilitates the preclinical and clinical PK studies of multi specific drugs. And for this, we have um, four antibody development platforms uh, the hybridoma, phage display. Beacon single B cell and uh, FAX single B cell platforms. Um, so overall, our services uh, also provide the um, to perform the immunogenicity assessment of multispecific uh, drugs in in preclinical and clinical studies, and uh, um, we do this by testing with uh, anti drug antibodies, the ADAs. Um, and uh, Sinobiological develops the high affinity, high specificity, and high sensitivity uh, ADA antibodies for customers using the well-established uh, rabbit polyclonal antibody technology that we have. So we cover, like, as you must be able to guess, that we cover the um, various steps of the preclinical and clinical um, studies for the multi-specific antibodies. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Massey, for your time today and for your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Sinobiological, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions that we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information that you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.